The market is nothing more than a construct of the mind. It's simply the name we give to the fundamental human impulse we have to deal with one another. Ah, welcome, Beatrice, here in Frankfurt. Thank you. And we are here in the middle of the finance sector. In your last film that we will see tonight, Crippled Symmetries, so, um, there are two people that are um, talking to each other um, in an urban situation. Yeah, so that is a, there's a banker um, and a composer, and they're essentially having a, a discussion about abstraction in their respective fields. So there is a, that is, kind of comes out of um, William Gaddis, who is a modernist author writing in the, I guess, 50s, 60s. J.R., this novel, is um, it's a great satire of American capitalism turned upside down. So the protagonist is this 11-year-old boy, and he amasses this vast empire um, through penny stocks that he um, controls largely via the payphone, so kind of anonymously. Um, with a muffled thing over the receiver so nobody understands he's a child. Um, and eventually this empire kind of spirals into insanity and everybody whose life it touches is sort of turned to dust. Particularly a lot of struggling artists who are um, swept up in its uh, web. And one of them, who's the, uh, the other kind of pr primary um, character in the novel, is a composer. Um, the school's kind of in-house resident modernist composer. Triple Symmetry starts with two faces. You know? The beginning yeah. is the face of George and the end is the face of the composer. And they're both performing um, this musical score called Disappearing Music for Face. Um, and the instructions of the score are um, smile very loudly and then very gradually over an extended period of time stop smiling. Um, so he does that score and he does it amazingly, I think. But um, but in, in, initially I had an idea that he would, um, that I would set up maybe more complicated conversations between him and the composer mm -hmm. and that didn't, really, mm -hmm. that didn't really unfold. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So you didn't uh, thought about replacing him with another kid or was it I too late at some point? It's too, it it's too late, down, gone too far okay. down a particular route. Yeah. Yeah. I think my... What is good about the way I make films and what is bad about the way I make films is that I'm very rigorous and faithful to my process. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes it fails and sometimes it's great. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes it's, uh, you know, it's wonderful. But, yeah. um, so the film uh, that I made, Crippled Symmetries, takes some of the, um, in a way it's an adapt, it's just, well, not really an adaptation of the book, it kind of takes the plot and the characters as, of the book as a sort of scoring device for a production. So. I worked with a real composer, I worked with a real class of 11-year-olds um, and it took some of the situations in the book and kind of set those up in the real world to see kind of what would unfold. When you bring together in your film um, that idea from the novel, from Gaddis, um, at the same time uh, an idea of contemporary music scores, um, where it's also more the idea of uh, something that could come together, like music and yeah. um, the finance yeah. system. Yeah, I mean, I, all of my films are, I like, have been historically very interested in um, modernist composition as a as a trope, or like looking at it as a as a a method for making for making for producing. So I was always interested in the relationship between ways of making music and ways of making film. I mean, it's always uh, kind of shifting, if you know what I mean. And I think what's interesting for me is that it's never really resolved. And, and the films that have all, are all like this strange tension between, um, I guess, the intention of something that's more radical politically. But then, like, in the edit, I'm really trying to regain control to be completely uh, like a despot and like, uh, kind of really control all the chaos that I've unleashed or this kind of the more democratic or egalitarian um, forces, let's say, that I've allowed to play out. Yeah. And there's all, there, the, all of the films are in some way a discussion between um, control and, and chaos or um, the individual and the collective, maybe. Yeah. Filmmaking for me is an inherently collective um, process. And so it's also to explore that a little bit more 
yeah. kind of explicitly and politically. Um, yeah, on the idea of the director, maybe to un un undercut the idea of the director a little bit. Yeah, but yeah. then I say that, but then now the last film I made, I just, I also, I experience extreme frustration. So like at the moment, I feel like the next film I want to make, I just, I just want to tell everybody what to do exactly, and for them to just do it. <laughs> I've just if had, you don't do it, yeah, I've had enough of democracy. Go out of my movie. Exactly. So it's always the terrain is always shifting a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Yeah. On the one hand, you're um, you're reading stuff that influences the way how you um, you film, you make yeah. productions, yeah. and since that is an ongoing. Uh, reading yeah. on like on the outside yeah. uh, of your film yeah. there is not um, a fixed script or a fixed kind of idea it starts no. with that point and it ends here yeah I mean it's the the method is shifting a bit so um, sometimes there is no script at all There's just, like in Crippled Symmetries, for example, there is these scenarios that I tried to recreate um, from the novel, but using uh, real characters and real um, situations. So the, the, what I'm looking at is not simply um, a reference, but also a method. So I'm not just looking at um, these compositions um, as a subject, but also deploying some of the logic in, in how the films are made. Yeah, but how do you come to those uh, com compositions or composers? Yeah. How do you... How do I encounter them? Is that, is that that there is something that these composers have in common with your questions? Or is it that you are fascinated I think, I, I by think these... it's more that, yeah. I'm, I come across something that m moves me in terms of its intention, maybe, or... Mm -hmm what it's trying to do or even the shape of it like, yeah. um, and so you know it's not so much of a jump to go I think from experimental composition to go to writing like Gertrude Stein or poetry like Eileen Miles because in in some way the formal tropes are, are connected right like the like poetry in general I suppose as a as a genre is like um, massively open-ended in terms of how the viewer experiences or the reader experiences it so it has an ambiguity built into it because the, yeah. it's not linear narrative right it's um it's more poetic so yeah. i read one thing you read another and that's very connected to um the compositions that i've been looking at and the experience of um both playing them but also lis listening to them i guess yeah i have in the past done quite a lot of like heavy theoretical research i guess or um i want my films to be um, theoretically informed, I suppose, but I don't want them to be. I never want to make a film that is an argument. Yeah. That yeah. is an that is an essay. Yeah. Uh, it should be a um, much more. What's the word? Like um, perceptual experience, or yeah. Yeah, and the character of the child allows you to um, to muddle that all up, right? To yeah, make yeah. it a bit messy and a bit chaotic and a bit non-rational and a bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, Uh, and a bit of an anti-essay in a way. Yeah. We did a great um, screening at the BFI. I feel like whenever I show Cripple Symmetries, I should bring all the children, because all the kids were there in the audience. And then we did a Q&A afterwards and they were really funny, because they, <laughs> they were very hard, like, quite hard on me. Um, so they, <laughs> so like, like um, the boy George, he was speaking about it, the shot of his face, you know, when he's performing yeah. the Supreme Music for Face, he's like, yeah, I liked it, but shouldn't you have cut it earlier? Why didn't you cut it? <laughs> um, so it was just kind of, um, I don't know, it was kind of great to have them there, like expanding the, that context somehow, or that, yeah. that uh, feeling, yeah. Thank you very much Welcome. for having you here and um, yeah, see you again tonight. Thanks.